I used to work in a cafe in the middle of some neighborhood. It was a quiet cafe and we didn't get many customers, so my friends would often come in to keep me company. One day, I was getting ready to close up as usual when my friend, Jun, came in with his girlfriend. Now, Jun was a gregarious guy, always making us laugh, but on this day, he wasn't his usual self. It looked like there was something on his mind. He was quiet and he had a bad complexion. It got me worried, so I asked him what was wrong. He replied, Something just scared the shit out of me. What do you mean? Did you see a ghost again? He remained quiet. In fact, he didn't talk any more after this. Apparently, he told his girlfriend not to say anything either, so she just sat there silently too. June has a strong sixth sense, if you can call it that, and in the past he had no trouble telling me the strange encounters that he'd experienced, even if I didn't want to hear it. So I naturally just assumed it was one of those encounters again. The only difference was that this time he refused to tell me what had happened and he just sat there with his head in his hands. This got me pretty intrigued and I turned to his girlfriend and pestered her to tell me what happened. June finally gave in and started to tell me. Here's his story. That day, he had just got back from a field trip organized by his trade school. He got to the train station and remembered he'd forgotten to take the house keys so decided to call home before heading back. Someone was usually always home so after a few rings someone picked up. He didn't really wait for anyone to reply and just rattled on. Oh hey it's me, I'm at the train station right now. Forgot my keys so can you make sure the door's unlocked? Thanks. He hopped onto the bus and eventually got home. When he got there the door was locked. He thought it strange since he'd called beforehand, so he walked around the house a bit, but it looked like no one was home. But someone did pick the phone up a few minutes ago, so he figured he just couldn't see anyone from the windows and decided to call again. He walked to the nearest phone booth sitting next to a cigarette stand. He dialed and called. After a few rings, someone picked up. Hello? It's me. Hello? 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 It's me, Jun. For some reason, he couldn't hear anything, so he continued calling home every few minutes. Someone always picked up, but they didn't say anything, or, at the very least, he couldn't hear anything, so Jun thought that the phone must be broken, and he went back home, intending to wait in front of the house. He was sitting there feeling annoyed when he suddenly remembered that there was a spare key hidden near the entrance for emergencies and he finally got into the house. When he walked in, it was dead silent. He checked all the rooms, but no one was home. He went and checked the phone. Nothing was wrong with it. Jun thought to himself that something was up, so he rushed back to the payphone and tried calling the house again. And just as before, someone picked up. This time, it really caught him off guard and he said, Hello? Thinking it was his older sister playing a prank on him, he said, Is it you, Mia? Answer me. Man, who is this? Who is this? Answer me. Jun kept calling out, but no one would reply, so he finally yelled out. Who the hell are you? I know you're there. Answer me now. No one's home. He finally got a reply. Scared the shit out of him, so he jammed the receiver down and ran back home. Once he got there, he looked everywhere, but all the windows were locked and there was no sign of anyone having been there. Just one thing though. The receiver of the phone was off the hook and on the floor. Needless to say, when I tell anyone this story, or when I even think about it, I get goosebumps and the hair on my neck raises. Let me just warn you, this story has to do with women's periods, so if you're grossed out by that kind of conversation, please skip this one. Let's begin. I worked with a guy at a convenience store a few years ago. He had OCD. If he worked the till, he had to wash his hands over and over and over again every time he touched money or touched someone else's hands by accident. 
The line would get longer and one of us would always have to step in to continue his job. He couldn't clean the toilets nor pick up dirt from the floor. But none of us could quite get mad at him because he was a really good guy and we all saw him as our little brother. He wasn't very good with people either, so the rest of us were doing all the main stuff like cleaning, working the till and talking to customers. One day he brought his girlfriend to work. She was so pretty and he announced that they were going to start living together. He was beaming. We were all really happy for him and told him congratulations and our manager even gave him an ice cream sundae to celebrate. For a while he'd come into work and tell us light-hearted things like, my girlfriend's such a good cook and I've gained some weight. But after about six months of them living together, he started to call sick quite often. When he came in, he didn't look happy and he didn't talk about his girlfriend as much. Hey, what's wrong? I asked him. He replied, well, and started to tell me his story. He'd never been asked out in his life before, and he didn't even know who she was, but she was so pretty and so nice that he agreed to start dating her. But once they started living together, they started to fight a lot because of his OCD. The thing he couldn't stand the most was when she was on her period. The bin that was in the bathroom? If she threw her used napkins in there, he went crazy because he couldn't stand the smell. If she took a bath while she was on a period, he went crazy because he didn't want to dip into the same water. He didn't even want her sleeping in the same bed because he was worried the smell would rub off on the blankets and she'd get bloodstains on the mattress. He ultimately made her sleep in the hallway on a towel whenever she got her period. Of course, they got into a massive fight over this and he started to demean her in the worst possible ways. About her body, the small things she did in everyday life that annoyed him. He finished it all off by telling her, I can't be with such a disgusting person, and ran out to stay with a friend of his. When he told me this story, two weeks had already passed since he ran out of the apartment. Then he said to me, she should be at work at this time, so I want to go grab all my things from the apartment. Can you come with me? So, when we finished our shift, we headed to the apartment that he shared with his girlfriend. I was thinking how I didn't want to get involved in their issues, but I didn't want anything to happen to him either, so I decided to just wait at the entrance while he got his stuff. When we got there, we checked that her car wasn't there and went up to their room. We slowly opened the door and couldn't believe what was in front of us. There was a ridiculous number of napkins all over the place. They were all used ones. They were stuck on the walls, on the floor, everywhere. She'd used pins and duct tape to keep some of them in place. All the lights had been left on and the windows were wide open. Because of that, there were insects all over the place. Lots and lots of them. She had smudged some kind of jelly onto her napkins so the insects were all over them. He went absolutely berserk. He tried calling her, but he didn't get through. I guess she disconnected her number. He ran to the bathroom to wash his hands, but when he went to grab the soap, there were tons of razors stuck in them. I'd never seen such a horrific sight in my life, and I can't remember how I got home after that. But anyway, he quit work shortly afterwards, and I haven't seen him since. According to my manager, his mum called to say that he wasn't coming into work anymore. I thought about what happened. I don't think she knew where to throw her used napkins, because he would go crazy even if she threw it away in the bin. She probably had no choice but to put it away in a place that he couldn't find. Then they had that huge fight where he said horrible things to her. She got so furious that she gave him a huge payback by doing what she did. One day she came into work and gave a brown envelope to one of our co-workers. She asked if we could pass it on to him. We obviously haven't done so because he doesn't work there anymore, but it's still sitting there. No one's opened it, but something soft seems to be inside, and I, for one, have a pretty good idea of what it might be. What did you guys think about that one? Who do you think was more at fault here? The guy who was OCD or his girlfriend? Tell me what your thoughts are in the comments below. I went into the toilet in some park in the middle of the night. This park was at the corner of a busy intersection and the road traffic was always hectic. Public restrooms can get pretty creepy, especially in the middle of the night. This night was no exception. I just felt like something was off as soon as I walked in. 
When I finished peeing, I turned around and I saw a woman staring at me. I would have probably pissed myself if I saw her before I went to the toilet. Why? Because the woman's head was poking out from the air vent above the toilets. The air vent was only about five centimeters in diameter. The head was pushing through a hole that was way too small, so the face was pulled back and it looked like she was laughing at me. The lights were pretty bright, so it was definitely real. I screamed when I saw her, and I ran outside forgetting to zip my pants up. When I got out, I saw a bunch of lights flashing and chasing me. I thought I was going to die and sort of just gave up, collapsing where I was. And when the lights came into focus, I noticed they were red and they were rotating. A bunch of men in uniform were standing around the restroom. What? The police? I couldn't understand why there were so many squad cars surrounding the toilets. Hey. Hey, you alright? The police had seen me running out and came to see if I was okay. And then he explained to me the situation. A man walking home from work was hit by a truck when he was crossing the road. He was thrown against the restroom where the vents are and his head got stuck in the vent from the impact. The woman I saw in there wasn't a woman at all, but a man that had just gotten hit by a truck. And he was alive. They were in the process of rescuing him and getting him out of there. When I looked back at the restroom, I saw the rest of him. He had really crashed into the vent head first. It almost looked comical. I was drunk, so I didn't notice the police cars that were on the other side of the restroom when I walked in. It made me realize how powerful the force of a vehicle could be. Hi guys! Next week I'll be bringing you a special episode where I'll be talking about a place that's close to where we live here in Kyushu. I don't want to give away too much, but the background video is a hint of what's to come. All the footage that I'll be using in next week's video have been taken by my husband and I. So yeah, um, keep your eye out for next week. And I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you who have watched my videos so far. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much.